Sand that was sticky with blood clumped between Clay's talons. The sun beat down, bright and hot in his eyes. He paced around the arena, thinking, Was there any way out of this? He couldn't count on Peril sparing his life, that was for sure. She'd betrayed him once, surely she would do it again, if it was to save her mother. He heard her scales scraping along the tunnel and turned to face her as she entered the arena. She stopped, and it was like every emotion in the world hit her in the face at the same time. I should have guessed, she said, furious and low, so only Clay could hear. The only dragon here you can touch me. No wonder she wanted me to stay away from you. I guess you should have, Clay said. Peril flinched. There you go, Peril, Queen Scarlet said. Behind her, Tsunami was dragged onto the balcony, wrapped in chains and glowing with anger. That's the dragon you have to kill before I set your mother free. Have fun! Peril slid toward Clay, and he fled to the opposite wall. She hesitated, then put on a burst of speed and chased after him. He waited until she was a heartbeat away, then lunged forward and body slammed her into the ground. The crowd roared with surprise and delight. She lay there gasping as he got up and ran to the other side of the arena again. She's not used to her opponents being able to hit back, he thought. Fiery heat blazed where his shoulder had touched her, but it faded quickly. He turned with his back to the wall and crouched, waiting for her to get up. Slowly, she rolled to her feet and paced toward him. This time, she stopped a short distance away. I'm sorry, she said plaintively. I know you're mad. I made a mistake. I just... I thought you were trying to get away from me. Well, I am now, Clay said. I don't want to kill you, she said, clawing the sand in frustration. But you have to, he finished for her. I had a whole plan. A plan where I saved you after Kestrel, and you liked me best of all. Peril, that's insane. I don't care if you save me. I want you to save my friends. That's what's important to me. She snarled suddenly. I'm your friend. You don't need them. She leaped at his head, and he shoved himself upward, throwing her over him and into the wall. He was across the arena again by the time she was able to crawl to her feet. I'll stick with the friends who aren't trying to kill me, thanks, he called. I'm not... Well... She stamped her talons again. It's not fair! The others can have any dragon! I only want you! Her wings snapped open and she leaped up, then dove at him with her claws outstretched. Clay snatched a talon full of sand and threw it in her eyes. She shrieked and blundered sideways in the air. He leaped to grab her shoulders and flung her to the ground. He rolled her onto her back and sat on her, looking down into her face. I don't, I know I don't know much about anything, he said, but I think it doesn't have to work like this. It does, Peril said, struggling to push him off. Her talons shoved ineffectually against him. Dragons kill each other all the time, in war, in here, anywhere, for no reason at all. That's just how we are, especially you and me. We're the same. We're dangerous. That's not how I am, Clay said. No matter what happened when I hatched, I can't feel this killer inside me that's supposed to be there. Maybe that's what the prophecy's about. Maybe the dragonettes are supposed to show everyone how to get along without a lot of killing. He noticed that the closest dragons in the audience were leaning in, listening intently. He hadn't been speaking for the whole stadium to hear, but at least a few had. Queen Scarlet wasn't amongst them. Hurry up and do it then! She called from her balcony. You have her at your mercy. Use your venom. That was thrilling and I didn't even get to see it the first time. Clay and Peril stared at each other for a moment. Did she just say what I think she said? Clay asked. But if the venom didn't come from her, Peril said, then where? Clay whipped around to face the balcony as Glory suddenly reared up in a blaze of sunflower gold and cobalt blue. She snapped her thin chain like a reed and launched herself off the marble tree. Her mouth was wide open, hinged like a snake's. She hissed, and a jet of black liquid shot out of her two longest fangs. Burns shoved Queen Scarlet in front of her and shot into the sky. Glory's venom hit Scarlet on the side of her face. The Skywing Queen began to scream. The stadium erupted in pandemonium. All the dragons tried to take to the sky at once, crashing into each other and clawing viciously to get away from Glory and the Screaming Queen. Wait! Peril grabbed Clay as he jumped away from her. She reached up and touched the bindings on his wings. 
They broke apart instantly, and his wings stretched free for the first time in the Sky Kingdom. Thank you, he called, lifting off. The guards on the balcony had all scattered after Burn, so when Clay landed next to Glory, there was no one left but him and her and Tsunami, and Queen Scarlet, who was beating her own head with her wings and staggering toward the edge. Glory, you're awake! Clay cried. Of course I am, she flared, tugging on Tsunami's chain. You couldn't tell I was faking? I was waiting for the right moment to do something. Did you seriously think I was asleep this whole time? Uh, Clay said. You looked pretty asleep, Tsunami said. Well, that's just great, Glory said. For the first time in my life, I pretend to be as lazy as everyone thinks rain wings are, and you actually believe it. Uh, I'm glad my friends have so much faith in me. Hey, you never told us you could do that, Clay said, pointing out to her venom-spitting teeth. Beyond them, Queen Scarlet crashed into her throne and screamed even louder. Her gold chainmail was starting to melt into her scales. I never could before, Glory said. Are you going to help me with this? Clay grabbed the marble tree and tried to lever it under Tsunami's chains. So how did you do that? He asked. Oh, well, there's a logical scientific explanation, and seriously, you really, right now, you want to have this conversation? You scared off Burn, but she won't stay gone for long, Tsunami pointed out. Clay gave the sky a worried look. Peril, get over here! No, Tsunami said. Not her, keep her away from me. We need her help, Clay insisted as Peril landed beside him. They're chains and bindings, he said to Peril. She hesitated. Please, he added, if we're really friends. Ah, all right, she said, glancing at Queen Scarlet. She touched the chains around Tsunami and they broke apart, collapsing with great clanking sounds to the balcony floor. Clay held his friend's wing bindings away from her scales and Peril burned right through them. Now we get sunny, he said, leaping into the sky. The air was full of beating wings, red and gold and desert pale, whacking into each other and knocking one another off course. Peril shot ahead of him, clearing a path as dragons panicked out of her way. Clay saw her tail accidentally brush a Skywing's leg. The other dragon howled, clutching the burn, and tumbled into the side of the mountain with smoke rising from his scales. Tsunami and Glory were close behind Clay as they soared up to the feasting hall over the cliffs. Wind billowed under his wings, and despite his fear of burn, he felt that same fierce joy grip him at the freedom of flying. After days of being terrified he might fall, it was exhilarating to know that now he couldn't, that he had the whole vast crystal blue sky to move in. Peril reached Sunny's cage first. Clay saw Sunny peering through the bars, trying to figure out what all the noise from the arena was about. Then her gray-green eyes landed on Clay, and her face lit up with joy. I knew you'd be alright! She cried as the three dragonettes each nosed her through the bars. I knew I shouldn't have worried! I just, just kept thinking about the prophecy and how we can't die because we have to stop the war. Tsunami snorted. Peril hovered in front of the cage and sliced through the bars with her claws. The metal sizzled and steamed for a moment, then dropped to the ground below. Sunny flung herself out the door into Clay's arms. She pelted him happily with her unbound wings. Wait, she said looking around. Where's Starflight? We lost him, Clay Glory said. What? Stop that, Tsunami said, hitting Glory with her tail. Glory means Maroseer came and took him away. He's fine. Better than us, especially once the dragons stop panicking and start looking for us. Let's head to the river. She banked around toward the cliff, scattering clumps of rusty blood red sand from her wings. But he just left, Sunny asked. She caught one of Clay's talons and stopped him in midair. Without us? He didn't have a choice, Sunny. Clay said, clasping her claw in his. Clay, wait, Peril said. Her copper wings shivered, and she clenched her talons as if she were about to split in two. My mother, if Queen Scarlet isn't dead, the first thing she'll do is kill her. She's right, Clay said as Tsunami and Glory came winging back to see why they hadn't moved. Tsunami, we have to get Kestrel out. Why? Tsunami challenged. What do we care? Kestrel was awful to us. We care anyway, Sunny said softly. We can't help it, even you. I don't. She was going to kill me, remember? Glory said. Clay did remember. He remembered every cruel word, every vicious bite. But he also remembered Kestrel offering herself to Queen Scarlet in their place. 
and he remembered the scars on her palms and the look on her face when she saw that Peril wasn't dead. She didn't raise us to care about her, Tsunami argued. Kestrel just was just keeping us alive, and if that's what she wants, the best thing we can do is run away right now. I'd like to be something more than alive, Clay said fiercely. I'd like to be the kind of dragon she doesn't think I am, the kind they write prophecies about. That dragon would rescue her no matter how awful she is. Tsunami lashed her tail, nearly knocking Glory sideways. Even though she was covered in blood, her blue scales shone through in the sunlight like buried sapphires. She glared at Peril for a long moment. Fine, she growled at last. Oh, not me, Glory said. Do what you like, but I'm not big, mushy ball of forgiveness like you are, Clay. She met his gaze calmly, but her scales were rolling red and black like embers inside thunderclouds. Then take Sunny, go to the cave at the bottom of the waterfall, and wait for us, Tsunami said. Can't I help? Sunny asked. I think I could. Yes, by not getting herself killed, Glory said. She tipped her wings at Sunny and flashed away over the edge of the cliff. Sunny hesitated, then squeezed Clay's talons and followed her. This way is the fastest, Peril said. She beat her wings, soaring up the cliff that overlooked the feasting grounds. Tsunami made a face at Clay and followed her. Clay could still hear the shouts and roars coming from the arena. He couldn't tell if the queen was still screaming. Dragons filled the air. None of them seemed to be searching for the dragonettes yet, but he knew it wouldn't be long. As they flew up, Clay passed a narrow shelf of rock with a scrubby bush clinging to it. To his surprise, a scavenger was hanging from the cliff face a few lengths above the shelf. It was one of the prey scavengers from the party. It had somehow managed to climb up this high without being spotted. It was still struggling up the rocks, gasping for breath and shaking with exhaustion. Clay glanced up at the distance to the top of the cliff and realized how much farther it still had to go, especially for such a tiny creature. He didn't know why he felt sorry for it. Scavengers were delicious nuisances, nothing more, according to everything he had been taught. But he was going that way anyway, and it had tried so hard. Clay dropped back, scooped the scavenger up in his talons, and flapped after Peril and Tsunami again. The scavenger gave a yell and started shoving at Clay's claws, but it carried no weapons, and, as far as Clay could tell, scavengers had no natural defenses of their own. This one was smaller than the others he had seen, with a thatch of black fur on its head and smooth skin nearly as brown as Clay's scales. It wriggled and beat at its talons frantically for the few moments it took to reach to the top of the cliff. Up here, the view of was mountains in all directions. Clay didn't know what a scavenger's natural habitat was, but this was the best he could do. Peril and Tsunami were already vanishing into a large hole that was the open roof of the main palace hall. Clay set the scavenger down gently behind a tall boulder. And stay away from dragons from now on, he said sternly, although he knew the scavenger couldn't understand him. The scavenger stared at him, its mouth open and closing. Not even clever instincts, Clay thought. Why wasn't it running away? Not his problem anymore. He nudged it with his claw, turned and dove into the roof hole. Down at the bottom of the hall, he could see Peril and Tsunami spiraling onto the grate over Kestrel's head. From here, he could also hear the clamor in the tunnels. Most of the Skywings were outside, hiding in the sky around the mountain peaks. But the heavy thump of dragon feet and clattering of claws and teeth echoed through the hall. Burn only had to collect her soldiers, a shield between her and Glory's venom, and then she'd come searching for the dragonettes.